Hello everybody and welcome to this EV training workshop on wave modeling products. My name is Alvaro de Pascual and I am developer of multi-year products in the EV MFC. The EV domain covers the North Atlantic Eastern Coast. This region is located at the end of the long fetch of the subpolar North Atlantic. Therefore, it's one of the world's greatest wave generation regions. In this practical session, we are using EV wave modeling products to visualize the evolution of North Atlantic storms. In the present exercise, we are going to learn how to visualize maps of significant wave height and also create our maps of mean wave directions for two storms occurred in December 2018. Elsa and This example is written in a Jupyter notebook that runs in a server, so that you don't need to install anything. You just have to use your web browser to access a web page. First of all, in the web page, uh, you will see some notes with the instructions to run its code cell. To execute a cell, we just have to select the cell and then push this triangle button here in the top of the page. Additionally, there is a shortcut, shift enter key, to run, to run cells. This example is written in Python 3 and code cells are these cells with gray background, for example this one. To run a cell you just have to click on the, on the cell and select the cell and after that run the cell clicking on the run button up here. When the run has finished, here appear the number of the orders sent to the server. Here in the table of contents you can see the different sections we are covering with this tutorial. First of all we have an introduction where we give some information about the process analyzed in this tutorial as well as the EV products used. After that we put our hands on with sections dedicated to produce different visualizations of the EV wave products. Section 2 is dedicated to plot six only maps of significant weight wave height from EV wave near real-time system and in section 3 we will learn to plot six only arrow maps of mean wave direction. In this example we are using the EV wave near real-time product to visualize the evolution of storms in the northeast Atlantic. Here I give you the link to the main page of the EV waves analysis product you can follow the link and here you can find all the information related with this product. In this first tab, information, you can find the general information of the product, such as the name of the product, the a sort of review, the list of variables included in the product, the spatial resolution, the temporal coverage, temporal resolution, etc. But in this second tab, you can find the links to the complete documentation of the product, the product user manual and the quality information document. Coming back to the Jupyter Notebook, in this example we are using data from the, the waves near real-time product to visualize the evolution of two winter storms in the northeast Atlantic. To do that, we are going to see two different variables, the significant wave high, which has the name VHM0, and the mean, mean wave direction, which has the name VMDR. As I said before, in this example, we will see the evolution of two North Atlantic storms occurred in December 2019. 
These storms were called El San Fabien. Here you can here you can find a few external reference to the description of these events. As usually happens with Python 3 programs, the first lines are devoted to load uh, necessary libraries that are used in the program. So in this first code cell of this example is just a list of the libraries used. Here you have a short explanation of the main purpose of each library as well as the links to the reference pages. To run this code, as we said before, you have to click in the cell and then run, push the run button. With this, we can jump into, into the first exercise of this training, which is the visualization of the significant wave height maps. Um, first of all, we, we have here a section with a short explanation of the data set we are using. As you can see here, we have all the information you need to download the dat dat data set from the Copernicus Marine Catalog. Uh, this is the name of the product. This is the name of the date set. As you can see, the, the date set is the only is the date set that includes the uh, data in only means, and also have some information about the the region we are downloading, the name of the variable, uh, excuse me, the name of the variable and the time period we are downloading. However, we are not going to spend time on download the data because we have already downloaded this data in the computer. As you can see in this left panel, we have a file browser with three different folders. In the folder data, inside the folder data, we have two netcdf files. One file for the mean wave direction in hourly basis and another need CDF file, the significant wave height in an hourly basis. So we have we have the date sets, all the date sets that we need to run the exercise in this training course. However, I encourage you to try the, to download this these data sets from the Copernicus catalog. Well once you, we have the data set in our computer, we can start to work with, with our data. Uh, first, the first cell we have, the first, first thing we are doing here is to, to define some variables, some parameters that is going to be required in, in the program we are writing here. For example, we have parameters for for the file name, as you can see, we are using a file name that is stored in the directory data and is the file of significant wave height in an hourly basis. Is as I said before, significant wave height is this file, this netcdf file. We, are, we have here also a, a parameter for the, for the variable name that, as I said before, in the case of significant wave height, the name of the variable is phm0. We have also a parameter to, or two parameters, the initial date and the final date, to define when we want to start the, to plot maps and we will, when we finish to, to plot maps. So we will plot every map in between these two dates. As you can see, we, we define dates as Python date time objects with this uh, instruction. Here you can see we have the dates corresponding to the storm called Elsa and here we have the dates corresponding to storm Fabien. However, these two lines right now are commented with this has and uh, this has signal. So they, these lines right now are uh, deactivated.
we also have another parameter that is skip time steps since we have a data set with only data we don't want to plot every time steps a step in this every time step from this uh, data set so we will skip uh, 12 elements so we will plot only one map uh, of every 12 uh, time steps since, since the, the temporal resolution is an hourly in an hourly basis uh, skipping 12 elements is like skipping 12 hours so we are plotting just maps twice a day we will plot maps starting at zero hours uh, every 12 hours we will, so we will plot the maps at zero and 12 hours every day and finally we have the last parameter which is the pass out is a path where we will save all the figures figures we are creating. This path, as you see, is there, there in the folder result. There is another folder, EV wave, wave significant wave height. In the folder results, there is another folder called EV wave significant wave height. This folder right now is empty, but uh, at the end of this exercise will contain all the five figures we have created. Well, we can run this cell by pressing the run button and we can continue with the next cell in this cell you can see we use a function from the library xarray this function opens uh, the data set from the file and creates an object that we have called data set we will use this object to access the data into the file you can see here we have printed the data the data set so with this we are creating this kind of report of the information included in the file name as you probably know the netcdf files contain three kinds of elements the dimensions the variables and the attributes here in the dimensions we have in this file three different dimensions latitude longitude and time as you can see, we have 600, about 600 elements in the latitude dimension, 481 elements in the longitude dimension, and 745 elements in the time dimension. Well, in here we have some inform numerical information, information of the values of the, each dimension, and here we have the list of variables, as you probably know. The netcdf files can have many variables inside the file but in this case we just have one variable called vhm0 which is a significant wave height and finally we have the list of main attributes of the file that is a general information about the file and with this, we have run this cell code. So here, we in this point, we have the data set opened and we can access the data inside the file. So we can jump into the next uh, cell code where we are focused to select the data we want to plot. To do that, we use this instruction that in this instruction, we are using the funcio function cell that is an uh, internal function of this object data set, date set. <coughs> uh, with this cell function, we are selecting in the variable var name of data set, we are selecting this data where the time is comprised between the slide given by date in, uh, initial date and final date. In, in this slide, is live we are also skipping few data this that is the skip time steps as you probably remember remember these three parameters have been defined in the configuration cell of the program right so we are selecting every every value from date any 
up to date in skipping every 12 elements right after this uh, after this we print this variable var and as before we obtain we obtain a short report of information stored in var you can see here in variable we are plotting the name of the variable we are returning the obtaining the name of the variable the number of elements in each dimension eight elements in time uh, 600 in latitude and 181 in longitude numerical information of the dimensions stored in this variable and also uh, we have some attributes attributes with for example the long name of the variable which is the spectral significant wave height and the units of the variable. Once we have selected the data we want to plot, we can jump into the next section, that is the section where we are plotting the maps. To do that we use this code, this is a cell quite long, but as you can see this in this cell we have defined it uh, for loop for every time value inside the variable var we create a variable time step and we format this time step to create a, a string date uh, we printed the string and here we are creating a new variable that I put from variable we, we create a new, a new one using the function cell and that uh, variable we are storing the specific time step we want to plot in this iteration of the loop and from now on we are going to plot the map in this iteration to plot the map we use the matplotlib function a very famous function in python to, to plot two dimension figures uh, with this function we create the figure, we have to create the axis and we use the, the base map uh, library we use, we create a map as a, an object base map this map object uh, is, is an object where we are going to include all the parameters required to plot a map for example, we are including the information of the kind of projection we want in our map, a projection mercator in this case. Uh, we are also including information like the maximum and minimum latitude and longitude in, in the window we want to plot. We also include information of if we want, whether or not we want to, to, to draw the coastal coast lines in our map, we want to or not to draw countries, the country borders, if we want to fill the continents so that we, we, we are creating a land mask in our map and also we are including in this map to drop few parallels and few meridians particularly we are plotting few parallels and few meridians between lat max and lat min, latitude max and latitude min and between longitude max and longitude mean we are including five parallels in our map here we include two instructions to, to format a, the final figure we are including the label in the y and x axis and here we are starting to work with the data to be plotted in this part First of all, to plot the data, we have to create the grid, or we have, yeah, we have to create a grid of data, because as you can see in the variable var, the values of longitude and latitude are stored as vectors. They are arrays with just one dimension in this in longitude and in latitude, but we need the information of the arrays in with two dimensions to create a, a grid with two dimensions. To do that, we use the function mesgrid from numpy. 
from the library NumPy. So we are transforming the, these uh, arrays with one dimension in arrays with two dimensions and two arrays with two dimensions with information of the longitudes and latitudes, the, the grid longitude and the grid latitude. After that, we have to transform this lat long information into information projected over the axis of the figure. Uh, we have to create a grid in x y uh, in x y in the x y axis. So we have to use the object map to transform this information with this instruction. And after that, we are ready to plot our map with the function pcolorMess from matplotlib. In this pcolorMess function, we we pass as arguments of the function, the information of the grid in the x direction, in the y direction, in the y axis, and also the information of the data we want to plot as colors. This data is here, that are the data we have selected previously at the beginning of the iteration, right here. It's the data of the specific time step we are going to plot, right? After this, we have our plot. Of, we have our plot, and we can jump into other instructions to to format the plot. For example, we can include a, a color bar in the in the, in the map. We can include the label of the color map. We can include up the title in the plot. This title is is generated by formatting a string with this instruction. This is typical instruction in Python to format strings. As you can see here, uh, these brackets are, are replaced with the, with the values of these two variables. So the, the final title will be EV wave near real time. Here we will include the, the name of the variable. And here this bracket will be replaced with the string date. After this, we include this instruction to show the figure in the console, and we will save the figure with this instruction uh, with a specific name that, that, as before, is, is formatted with this instruction, it's replacing this bracket with a pass out, so the, the figure will be stored in the pass out, and we will create a specific name for each figure, including the, the date of the map in the name of the figure, replacing this bracket with this string. And we are creating the figures in format JPG. However, we could change this and we could create figures in many other different formats, for example, for example PNG, PNG or other. Well, we can run. We are ready to run this all. Um, here it is. Here is the result of our, of our cell. The plotting of time steps of different maps, of a sequence of maps of significant wave high. You can see here in the title we have included the date of the of the map here. You can see they're starting to appear the saved files created in the in the loop. Another one here. We are creating a map for the December fourteenth at zero hours and at twelve hours for the fifteenth at zero hours and twelve hours, etc. Here can, we can see the, the, this day there was uh, the, the final stage of a previous storm, but, but after this storm, he, here near to the latitude 48, we start to see the, the, the effect of the Elsa storm here 
you can see in the in the color bar with the maximum value we are going to see in this sequence is about eight nine meters of significant wave height, and here we can see the evolution of the storm affecting the northwest coast of the Iberian Peninsula and also at the end of the storm affecting also the region near to the uh, Madeira Island. Well, here we propose some, some issues to discuss. Uh, see the wave event associated to the storm Elsa, we have seen, we have already seen. And here we also propose few exercises, modify the configuration of the options to show the storm Fabien, well, and modify the parameters, skip time step, and see the results, and detect other storms in December 2019. Well, uh, to do the first exercise, modify the configuration option to show the storm Fabien, we just have to go to the configuration file. here and activate these lines and deactivate these lines. To deactivate these lines we can comment these lines with the has symbol and we can activate this line removing the has symbol. Well, once this is done we have changed the range of dates we want to plot from 14th up to 17th and we are selecting here the day 2021-2023. Well, we can run this cell again, pressing the run button. And we have to run the rest of cells from here, every cell. You can see here we have now in the time dimension that our first data, our first date is the 21th. And finally, we can uh, run this cell to plot the maps. You can see the, in the previous run we have obtained it. Uh, the first, or first, first time step was in December 14th, but now if we run this cell, our first time step is in December, December 21, right? With this, we are starting to see the, the arrival of the storm, Fabien, that affected the Iberian Peninsula, the Northwest Iberian Peninsula, also the Bay of the Complete Bay of the Biscay. Here you can see, start starts to appear the new files we are creating for every day and for every every hour. As before, we are planning to maps for every day. For, for example, for 23rd, for this day, we have time the, the map at zero hours and at 12 hours, right? The next uh, exercise proposed is to modify the parameter skip time steps and see the results. For example, we can modify this parameter, skip time step, and for example, we would like to see with more detail the evolution of this storm, we could create, we could include, to plot a map of every six hours, for six hours, for example. So we run this all. Again, we have to run every cell from here and we plot the map. Well, we, we can, you can see here we have the first, our first map is at zero hours. After that, we have another map at actually six hours and 12th and 18th. And again, in the next day, we have a map at zero hours. We are plotting for maps a day, right? Well, 
the last exercise is to detect another storm event in December 2019. To do that, we can modify the configuration of the program again. At this time, we have to change two parameters. First of all, we can comment this. Create a new range of dates to be plotted. For example, we can start to plot since we want to, to have a look over the whole December month. We can start to plot in first of December at zero hours. And we can start to plot in 2020 January. At zero hours, right? With this, we will see maps of uh, significant wave height for the whole uh, December, month of December. But uh, if we plot three maps for every day of December, we will get about 120 maps. That is by far too much. So we can just try to, map, to plot one map a day, one map every 24 hours. So we can run this cell code. And from here in advance, run every cell again. And here you can see with this configuration, we are plotting maps from the first day of December, one map a day. Day 3, day 4, 4th of December, 5th of December. Here you can see how the number of files is rising again. Here you can see there was an event, a stormy event, affecting the Ireland, British Islands and the north of France. In, in December 9th, and after the day, we had a, another storm that in 13th of December, that the storm also had a, a name that was the storm called the Daniel. You can look for information of this storm in, in the links I give you before, in the references. And after that, we have again the storm Elsa affecting the northwest uh, coast of the Iberian Peninsula. And after that, we have the storm Fabian affecting the Bay of Biscay and the northwest coast of the Iberian Peninsula. Well, there was no more storms in December. It's, and with this, we have done the three exercises. I think we can jump into the into the next next exercise, the visualization of the mean wave direction maps. Uh, for this visualization, we are using a different data set. As you can see, the product we are do from we are downloaded the. The date set is the same than, me, than before, and the date set is exactly the same than in the in the previous exercise. Is the excuse me again? Is the is the early data that is the same date set that we use in the example in the previous example? However, here we are downloaded downloading another different variable, which is the mean wave direction. This variable, the MDR. Well, as before, this data set, data set is already in our computer in this directory, in the direct directory data, is this file in wave direction of 05005 early, right? Uh, 
So we can start to work with our data, with the data set. The first thing we do is, as in the previous example, is we put in a, in a, in a cell code, in a code cell, uh, the information of few parameters that could be interesting, that could be interesting for the running of our, of our program, for example, the name of the file we are going to use, that as before is stored in data, in this, in this case, is the file of mean wave direction in an hourly basis, on an hourly basis, and the variable name, the initial and final dates to be plotted, as before for Storm Elsa, we use these dates that are expressed as a Python date time objects. We have a parameter like before, which is the parameter to skip time steps. And here we have a, a new parameter that is the skipping of that long data. Uh, we are going to plot an arrow maps, an arrow map. So, uh, since the product we are downloading has a quite high resolution, if we plot an arrow in every grid point, we will get a mesh in our map. So, we have to reduce the resolution of our product uh, and we have to rescale our data set. Right? So, we will use this parameter to skip some lat long elements, as we exactly the same that we have done with the skipping time steps, but in the lat long dimensions. Finally, we have a parameter like before, the pass out, where we are going to, to save the figures we are creating. The, this path is the results and the folder EV wave mean wave direction is that folder that right now is empty. Right. We can run this first cell and we can we jump into the next one, which is a jump which we are familiar right now because it's pretty the same than before. It's just a, a command to open the data set and to create a an object that will be used to get access. It's kind of uh, an object that will we will use to access the data in, inside the file, right? And we print this object data set to create, to show a report, a short summary of the information in the data set. You can see it's pretty the same than before, but with the difference that now we have another difference variable, we do not have the significant wave height, we have another variable that, which is VMDR, the variable for uh, mean wave direction. The number of latitude, longitude, and time values is exactly the same. And we have the list of attributes giving general information about the file. Right? Here, we jump into a cell that, similar to the cell we wrote in the previous example. It's a cell where we are selecting the data we want to plot. But there is some differences respect to the previous example. Here we select, we are not selecting just a range of times. We are selecting a slice of time, the longitude and latitude. But since we want to get the whole a range of latitude, available latitudes and longitudes, we don't define any value of initial and final and final value of, of for the dimension, we include a known here. So with these instructions, we are selecting a slice for the whole uh, range of latitudes available. Yep. Latitudes available for the whole range of latitudes available, skipping every mm, 15 elements. This is the parameter we have defined it here. Skip that long. Uh, and we are skipping with this parameter uh, set to 15. We are skipping in our uh, rescale. We are rescaling our data set, skipping every 15 elements in the latitude direction and longitude uh, direction. 
dimension. And the time is exactly the same as before. We are selecting just a slice where we are uh, defining the initial date and the final date and the number of elements we are skipping. Exactly the same, these parameters have been defined here, here, and here, right? Once we have our selected data, we print the variable to be, get a report of the data to, with, of the data we have selected. As you can see the new variable where we have selected is, is bmdr. And here we have the, the dimensions. As you can see, we can compare the number of elements in latitude and longitude. Now it has been reduced clearly, respecting the number of latitudes and longitudes stored in the initial uh, data set, from, which jump from 481 elements to 41 elements and from 645 elements up to 33 elements. Well, now here is the long name of the variable in wave direction from. From here, once we have selected the data we want to plot, we can continue plotting our map, but in this case, here the variable, you can see the units of units of this variable is a degree, is an angle, is an angle, uh, and it's an angle that is uh, referenced that is usual in the geophysical science, is an angle referenced to the north, the north, the zero of the angle correspond to the direction north, and this angle incre increases clockwise in the direction of the clockwise. So we need to transform these angle, these values of these angle values into uh, vector components, orthogonal vector components. To do that, we create this, we define in the memory of the computer this function, this short function. With this function, we pass to the function the value of an angle. And this function returns the value of the components u and v of, uh, of the vector, right? We, after that, we vectorize this function using the function vectorize from NumPy. This is done because this function works pretty well for specific values, for just one value, but we can't pass uh, arrays to this function. So we can do this with this order. We are modifying this function to create a new function vectorized. So we can pass to this function, function complete arrays of values. And we will, it will return arrays of u and v components. Well, we run this cell code, but we don't receive any output. However, and finally, we can go to this cell that where we are plotting our map. You probably are very familiar with this code because it's pretty the same than in the case before. We have a for loop for every time value in the variable var. And we, for every time step, we are creating a variable data to plot. <coughs> that is the selection of the specific time step in the variable var. Here we have uh, a difference respect to the previous example, that, that is the instruction that, trans that transforms the values of angles given in data to plot in the com vectorial components, in orthogonal vectorial components u and v. Actually, these are the values we are going to plot. The values of a vector, not the values of an angle. Right? From here, we start again to plot a map with matplotlib. We create a figure, we create the axis, we create the map exactly the same than before. 
we include coastlines in our map, we include uh, the boundaries, the borders of the, con of the countries, we fill the continents, so we create a land mask in the, in the map, we draw parallels, we draw a few meridians, we include, include the labels of the y and x axis, and again, exactly the same as before, we are creating the grid for our map. We are transforming with the function mesgrid the, the values of longitude and latitude from the one dimension arise to two dimension arise here. And we transform this two dimension arise of latitude and longitude into two dimension arise of x and y. Uh, these are the properties of the, the, the grid points, the grid points projected over the axis of the figure. Right? To, plot the, to plot the map, we use the function quiver from the object map, uh, and we pass to this function the, the definition of the grid in the x direction, the array of the grid in y direction and the components, the vectorial components of the, of the direction, right? We include in the map the title, uh, title formatted as before with this instruction. We include the title, we show the figure and we save the figure with a formatted name where the beginning of the name is the path where we want to store all our figures. Well, we can run this example here. It's all here, and here it is. We have a map of arrows uh, showing the direction of propagation of, of waves. Right? We have, as before, we have a map for every 12 hours because we have set the time, the skip time step uh, parameter was set to 12, to, to 12. So we are obtaining, to, obtaining two maps a day here. Well, in the description of results, we have to see the wave heaven associated to Storm Elsa. It's already done. And as exercise, we have pretty similar exercises for this, this example. We have to modify the configuration of options to show the Storm Fabien. I will let it to, to you to, to try this exercise and uh, because we have already done in the previous example and we have we can modify the parameter skip time step step and see the results and modify the configuration options to show other storms in December 2018. These examples are exactly the same than before but so I'm not going to spend time on this right now. Uh, but I'm gonna see this example where I say I ask you to modify the parameter skip that long part parameter and see the result. Well, let's imagine we can with this we will see what's the effect of skipping the lat long parameter of modifying the skip that long parameter. For example, let's imagine we want to plot more arrows than the arrows plotted here. We think they are not enough. So we won't go to the configuration cell and we say that we want to plot, for example, an arrow of every five elements in latitude and longitude. We run this cell, we have a cell code and the cells come here in advance. We run this, we run this, run, and the run. this is one and this and let's see what this is what we obtain you can see there is a lot of arrows here 
and actually we can see too much here because it's quite a very messy map so we can not use this clearly we can use this uh, parameter skip plus long to set to five let's imagine we want we say okay there is a bunch of arrows here let's reduce this so we can go to the configuration and we can modify this and set the, this parameter to 15 and every cell here with this we are selecting uh, we are plotting just one grid point of, uh, of every 50 elements it's much lower than we did before with 15 and here you can see the result we are skipping 50 elements between arrow and arrow so we are receiving something there is not too much information in these maps there is a lot of white space between arrows so we need to, in every map we plot we need to find uh, the equilibrium the good uh, value for this parameter in my opinion for this case this specific case this parameter the optimum for this parameter is about 15 if it is a good um, response creating maps with not much not much arrows but enough arrows to see to see the the, the features of the of the data right well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.